Today's lesson is a constructing task and it is called 10 flashing fireflies. What we're going to be looking for and finding are combinations that make 10. We're going to think about lots of different ways to solve a math challenge. So first of all, have you ever even watched a firefly? If you're from the South, especially Georgia, you may have heard these called lightning bugs. So this is what a firefly is. Let's watch a quick video on fireflies in case you have not seen them before. The synchronous firefly ranges throughout the Southern Appalachians. It really is a pretty magical thing to see. I think people are just fascinated by fireflies, you know, especially growing up. Um, a lot of people have experiences of catching fireflies in jars and looking at how they're doing their flashing, you know, looking at them real close. Maybe it reminds them of their youth and they want to bring their children out to experience the same thing. The synchronous firefly can be distinguished from other species by its pattern of six flashes about half a second apart. It may look somewhat random at first, but when you get a high density of males flashing, the synchronicity of the dark period is, is very obvious, and then the flashing itself will become synchronous as the night goes on. Generally, fireflies do have a similar appearance. Uh, some are larger. The predatory ones tend to be a little bit bigger. And there's a really small species, too, called the, the blue ghost, and it's very small. Um, but generally, they're, they're a type of beetle, and so they're going to have uh, this hard outer shell over their wings that they used to fly with. Um, and they usually also have a little bit of red and yellow markings uh, right above their head. And so uh, you really do have to look at the flash pattern and some other morphological characters to tell the species apart. Generally, the habitat where we find Photinus carolinus is in these low-lying, moist areas where there's kind of a relatively clear understory so that the fireflies can visually see each other. It also has to have somewhat of a closed canopy so that it can be nice and dark. Um, they typically start flashing around 9.30 or 10, but they do wait for it to get fairly dark. There is a, a couple of theories as to why they're synchronous, and the female really does need a large light input in order for her to respond. That's how she recognizes the correct species. Uh, so when she responds and the males then know that she's the right female, then they can reproduce. There's lots of other things that are flashing. So they have to have this sort of Morse code in order to be able to know they're with the right species. Okay, so if you've never seen a firefly or a lightning bug, hopefully that gave you a good idea of what they are. We also have a story that we're going to listen to. So what you're gonna need for this activity is pen and paper or pencil and paper um, or a dry erase marker and a uh, dry erase board. You're also gonna need 10 items to count. So I know you're not gonna have fireflies. They usually start coming out when the weather is much warmer. We typically see them in June here in Georgia. So if you have any kind of little items that you could um, count, if you, and also you'll need a little cup um, so it can act like the jar. When I was a little girl, and even sometimes now in the summer, I get a jar like this one, and you can punch holes, um, get your mom or dad to take some, some sharp object and poke a couple of holes in the top part of the um, jar. And then you can put a little grass in there, a stick, and as you catch, gently catch the fireflies, you put them in the jar. And then after you can collect them, you let them go. So this is what I used to do when I was a little girl. And I'm going to use this after listening to the story to show you some ways to count fireflies. So here's our story.
okay. So that's our story. So what you're gonna do now is if you have your objects ready, we are going to try and solve our math challenge. So if you wanna just draw a jar on a piece of paper and you can use your manipulatives that you have, um, you can do that. But here's the question. How many different ways could 10 fireflies be arranged with some in the jar and some in the night sky? So if you're doing this on paper, you could even color half of your paper black for the night sky, and you could have the other half of your paper just plain, like it's the jar. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is count out 10 fireflies. So I am going to count out, I have 10 little pieces of paper, pictures of fireflies. I'm gonna count out 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you count out your ten fireflies too. Now, I have an uh, actual jar, but if you just want to use a jar that you draw on your paper, you can do that. So I am going to use my desk pad that I have here. This is gonna be my night sky, and then here's my jar. So if I put one, two, three, fireflies in my jar, I'm going to put some in the night sky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you remember, how many did I have in the jar? I had three. And now I have seven. So what kind of word problem could you make using the example that I just showed you? I could say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three make 10. Or I could say three and seven make 10. Let's look at the example they have on the page. On this page, they show one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They have the 10. So if you want to draw yours on the paper like that, you can just have a jar on the page and maybe draw um, the night sky with some stars. You can just do your paper in two parts and then you could have your fireflies whatever you're using to count if you're using cubes or beans or coins anything that you're using just pretend those are fireflies and make sure you start off with 10 and see how many different ways you can make the number 10. So my first example it was seven and three make 10 and then we and then which also means three and seven make 10. So now if I go back, I can try it another way. I wanna make sure that I have all 10 of my fireflies back and ready to count. So this time I might put one, two, three, four, five fireflies in my jar. And then that means I have five <clears throat> that are left in the night sky. Can you make a word problem with that? Go ahead and make your word problems. You can use the one example that I gave. 
You can also use this one and finish this challenge. If I have five in my jar and five in the night sky, what kind of word problem can you make? And also try and figure out what other combinations of fireflies in the jar and in the night sky that you can put together or join together to make the number 10. You can write your answers on your paper. You can use manipulatives and take a picture. You can also write your answers on your dry erase board and take a picture of it and post it on Seesaw. We would love to see the word problems you come up with.